she who is undoubtedly the daughter of a Denegad. The Sada had spotted the ruins from the battlefield below, and now that the wound that had been saved, she could take a proper look. She remarked on similar ruins when they rescued the captured Alliance scientist with Afra, and this was clearly not the work of the islanders. It resembles the work of her own people more than anything else. Look, there are some images on these walls. Let's get closer. This is the first time I've seen these drawings so closely. You have never come here. You certainly seem to know the place. This site is sacred and taboo. Everyone knows where it is, but no one ever comes here. All these colors are so beautiful. I never would have imagined that they could create something so delicate. Who are you talking about? Of those who built these lodgings that my ancestors vanquished in a past war. You know who they were? I only know the legend. The legend of Dida Kid and Nadaigis. I'm listening. It is said our people lived peacefully until the men appeared from the sea, intent on making our lands their own. They dug great caverns into the earth, ripped down our forests, destroying everything in their wake. They were evil. The warriors killed so many people that even their own people came to fear them. Here, they built a terrible city that spewed out clouds of cinder and death. Our kings and queens were desperate. They went to the heart of our island, and the island heard them. From the woods appeared the first guardian. He was taller than a city, and with each step it smashed a lodging. It was a guardian of Rat, and the city could not resist him. Since then, the Earth answers our call for magic, and in exchange, we become all Manawi, in keeping with the pacts our kings and queens once made. It is a very sad and terrible legend. I wonder who these people from the sea could have been? A people from the continent, no doubt. Our Malachor might well be the cursed result of that war from another age. We have nothing more nor anyone else to find here. I must report all we've learned to Constantin. But before she reported, the Queen, Ciora's mother, had been captured by the Alliance soldiers in the retreat. Karantz, my mother is still held in this outpost near Vegigidor. I must do everything I can to free her from the Lion's Claws. So, will you accompany me? We will do everything we can to free her. Do not worry. Let's go. The Alliance fort was in a cleared area of the woods. It seems fairly clear that they were the ones encroaching on Siora's tribe. Halt! Who goes there? De Sade. I am the Legate of the Merchant Congregation. Oh, well, you can come in, Your Excellency. But this savage, on the other hand, Am I the one you call a savage, Renaigse? This young lady is the princess of her people, and she is with me. As such, I would appreciate if you let us through. Very well, Your Excellency. Please go and find the captain. I'd feel better knowing that he gave you his endorsement. Surprisingly, they made no comment on Bishop Petras, even though they objected to Ciora's presence. Well, who are you? De Sade, Legate of the Merchant Congregation. Why are you at war against the natives? Because they reject our presence. They've been attacking us for months. These savages, they stubbornly refuse civilization, and our men pay the price. We can't let them slaughter us without reacting. Since you arrived here, you have destroyed the forest and ripped open the earth. And people disappear in our villages, the on all Manawi first. We are only defending ourselves, and we are the savages. Since we've defeated you, you can believe what you like. Allow me to introduce Siora. 
the daughter of Queen Bladnid, whom you faced on the battlefield. We understand that you brought her mother here, and I would like to negotiate her liberation. A liberation? That'll prove difficult. She's dead. No! You! You let her die! You may even have finished her off like an agonizing animal! We didn't need to. When we collected her up from the battlefield, she was severely wounded. She died on the way to the camp. I want to see her body on al -Manawi. Please. I must see her. Can we see her, Captain? If you're the one who's asking, Your Excellency, it should be possible. You're in luck. We were thinking about getting rid of it, but we received the order to keep her body. It's still at the infirmary. Ask the doctor. He'll show it to you. Thank you, Captain. Siora, I'm terribly sorry. Let's go see her now. I need to... I will pray for her soul, Siora, so that the Enlightened may welcome her in his glory. The infirmary must be the building on the right, near the camp entrance. Let's go. Who are you? Are you looking for a doctor? I'm the legate of the congregation, and this is Siora, the daughter of the queen whose remains you are keeping. I would like to see her. I need to see her. Please. My condolences, madam. The body of your mother is back there in the room on the left. Do you have many wounded? Yes, too many. And many will die. We don't have enough supplies to heal them all. I'm sorry, doctor. The doctor was surprisingly sympathetic given his alliance allegiances. It also seems that the battle hit the garrison hard, but unfortunately it seems that we cannot help with the wounded. Matir. No. I should give you some privacy while you are mourning. We won't be far. And Tir too, Matir. Men sida den on mil frichtemann. I must take her with me on Al Manawi. We must perform the rituals. The captain said that he was instructed to keep her body. It will not be easy to convince him to disobey. I do not care about the captain's orders. She is my mother. She must be given back to the earth. So, let's go back to see the captain and try to make him change his mind. You can try, but with all due respect, I doubt that you will succeed. He will not want to draw attention to himself by disobeying this order. What do you mean? I believe he is a traitor, and that he made a deal with Telemi. Those are some serious accusations, even for a member of the Guard. Why would you believe such a thing? I overheard a conversation that got me thinking, and I also saw certain documents. We could use them to pressure him. Did you take them? No, that would be too risky. I do not want to get into trouble. But I suppose they would still be amongst his other belongings. Will they let us rummage through this place without protesting? Most of the guards returned to Hikmet after the battle was over. If you are discreet, you should be able to enter the officer's building. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Shouldn't you ask the captain first? Maybe he'll change his mind. You're right. Let's try talking to him before rummaging through the camp. Not surprisingly, the captain wasn't particularly keen on releasing the body. We would like to retrieve the remains of the Queen. Bring her back to her people and her family. That will not be possible, Your Excellency. As I told you, the Governor specifically asked us to keep her. He wants her delivered to one of his scholars who wanted to study her. Captain, I insist. Let us take this body with us. I have orders, Your Excellency. I've already told you. It is my mother we are talking about. My mother, whom you let die by dragging her all the way here. Give her back to me, or I swear that I will never leave you in peace. This isn't the right way to approach this, Siora. Come. This man is as cold as stone. I'm afraid we have no choice but to pressure him now, like the doctor told us. We will have to be discreet if we want to find these documents without getting caught. But was it really a good idea to speak about our plans in front of him? Either the commander felt completely secure, or was oblivious to what penalty treason could bring, because the letter was in plain sight. The doctor was right. 
They are trafficking weapons illegally with San Mateus. If word reaches Hikmet, these men will face a firing squad. But none of these documents are signed. The captain managed to cover his tracks. This large box must contain the documents you are searching for. I hope the officer doesn't keep the key. I don't see how we could steal it from him. He may have left it somewhere. Come, let's continue searching. The key to the chest was in the guard tents towards the rear of the cow. Here's a document that could be useful. They're meeting with the buyers. Then we should go there. He won't be able to deny it if we catch him red-handed. There is a risk that he will react violently. But we have no other choice. Let's go then. I know this place. It is further down the road, near a large tree. Here we are. This is the tree that was mentioned. Let's hide while we wait for them to arrive. Evening came and the meeting was indeed taking place. Well, Captain, you have some peculiar friends for a man who obeys the Alliance. You? What are you doing here? We stumbled upon some strange documents and wanted to see for ourselves if there was any truth to them. Sorry, my friends. If you want our shipment, then we need to get rid of this nosy legate. Captain, you are making a grave mistake. All we want is to negotiate. I want the body of my mother. You protect me in this battle. Close to me, sir, it's nasty. May the shadow engulf our enemies. May the shadow engulf our enemies. Enough! I surrender! I would never have thought that you would dare to attack allies of the congregation. It seems to me that you were the one who attacked. How did you put it? This nosy legate? And why are you on his side, Father? I defended myself, just like my friend. And I know Cornelia would not approve of these little trades with the enemy. Had you simply listened to us, Captain, this fight would not have taken place. All we wanted was for you to respectfully deliver the body of the Queen to her village. And will you stay silent about what you saw? We are neutral. Trading amongst yourselves does not concern us. In that case, very well. I'll return to the outpost and ensure it's done. Now I would like for us to return to my village. I am eager to reunite with my sister. In that case, let's return to Vedrais. Isild. Our... mother. I know, Siora. And Ivar's Tirse. Some men delivered her remains here. They said that it was thanks to you. And the Renaigze legged. Thank you. We will be able to pay homage to our mother. Why are there mind shakers here, Aselt? I meant to tell you about it. They came saying that our mother had made an agreement with Teleme. But Mater did not tell me about it. She didn't say anything to me either. I do not like this, Iselt. These people want to drive us away from the land. I know. But we need help after the defeat. And they say that she made a promise set in stone. The spirits of the people of our village would have to go to the light, and in exchange they'd help us against the lions. This is impossible. Mater would never have done such a thing. They are lying, I'm certain of it. They may be. But if there really is a promise set in stone, we cannot break it. And we will have to bury our mother according to their rituals. We must verify it. I will not stand there while these mind shakers take our village. I'm sorry about what happened to your mother. 
How are you feeling? Unwell. I am angry. And I feel an immense void within me. I blame myself for not having been on this battlefield with her. I understand. My mother had the Malachor, and yet I had to leave her behind as she was at death's door. I can't help thinking that I should have stayed by her side, just like you. And you could not have done anything to save her, either. Thank you, Onol Manawi. Your words alleviate my sorrow. Do you have anyone, a friend, perhaps, whom you could talk to in this trying time? I usually confide in my sister, but she's suffering too. And I think she resents me for not having been there when our mother needed me. I know we've only known each other for a little while. But if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. Thank you, Anal Manawi. You are a good person. And I'm glad that you are my friend. Could you tell me about Siora? You are right there and you let him talk about you like this? A seer? That's a strange friend you have there. Perhaps I wanted to hear how you'd reply. Perhaps, but I don't like this. This was a concerning development. That Telema would seek to undermine the bridge alliance was not surprising. But it was surprising that they do so, so close to New Serene, and thus undermine the congregation's position. It was also deeply suspicious that neither of the Queen's daughters were aware of this arrangement. Hello, my child. What a pleasure to see someone come to us with such eagerness. Do you want to hear the word of Saint Matthias and come into the light? <laughs> Not really, father. My name is de Sardé. I'm the legate of the congregation. Nice to meet you, your excellency. What can we do for you? What exactly do you hope to do in this village? Well, bring light to these naive souls, of course. When we spread the word of St. Matthias, I'm sure they will embrace our faith with fervor. If the missionaries were here on false pretenses, they weren't letting on. But Cousin would want to know about discovering the ruins. It seems that they had been invaders from the continent well before our time. But when she saw him, he looked even worse than last time. Happy to see you, my dear. You really don't look well. Have you not yet seen a doctor? No, no, it's nothing. You know that I've always had a weak stomach. My nausea will leave me eventually. You wanted to tell me something? Allow me to present Afra, an emissary of the Bridge Alliance. She is an imminent naturalist who studies local flora in an effort to find a remedy. Your Excellency, it is a great honor. You were part of Governor Buren's lost expedition, if I've understood correctly, were you not? Yes and our research would have borne fruit if it hadn't been so brutally interrupted. I can only imagine. Nevertheless, you are most welcome. Your great learning will certainly prove useful. I implore you, my fair cousin. Do continue. We are eager to hear your news. We were not able, alas, to stop the clash between the forces of the Alliance and Siora's clan. We arrived at the village and battlefield too late. The Queen fell. I am extremely sorry for your loss, Princess. Thank you. My sister survived, fortunately, and we are recovering from this tragedy together. But our clan was extremely weakened by this battle and by recent events. We shall keep a close eye on the Bridge Alliance and their undertakings. Rest assured. You should know that the battle took place in the middle of ancient ruins. The ruins were quite strange. We discovered a fresco that I am certain was crafted by continental hands. Really? And how ancient are these ruins? Could they date back to the first landings of the Bridge Alliance? They date much farther back than their arrival would explain. My mother and my grandmother have always known them. Siora told me of a legend that spoke of them, about a people from the sea that were vanquished there. Do you think it was the Norths? It is not our custom to found a landlocked settlement. We have our islands and it is enough for us. If they are ancient, perhaps your people once practiced older customs. This story is troubling, but it reminds me of something that I once read in the reports of Lady Morange. You should go and find her. Perhaps she could tell us more about them. Very well. What do you know about the ruins found to the northwest of here? <laughs> 
The site that the natives call Didakidnadagais? That is not how we pronounce it, but yes, we are speaking of the same place. <laughs> your language is difficult to master, but I find it fascinating. Uh, to answer your question, I had countless questions about the place when our explorers and scouts first brought back sketches. Intrigued, I went there. I noted the architecture and their decorations. It is certain that they bear a striking resemblance with continental constructions, but they are more ancient. Too old to have been recently built by the Bridge Alliance settlers when they first set foot on the island. I even questioned the natives, but they only spoke of a people of the sea. My first thoughts went to the Norts, but they're not known for building large towns, less so cities. There are other ruins on a cliff to the east of here. Perhaps they hide the key to this mystery. I hoped to organize an expedition, but the region is dangerous and hard of access. We explored mines at the bottom of the cliff, but we were not able to find an access to the plateau. If the mystery of these ruins intrigues you as much as me, it is in that direction that you should begin to look for answers. The ruins were a fascinating discovery, the Desa they will need to explore, but it was not critical to do so at the moment. Afra asked her to look into learning about the transformations the natives underwent. The Alliance considered these changes physical, and that was leading to the kidnapping of natives. For research, as they put it, meaning cutting them open, but they said they knew that the conflict between the Alliance and the natives could not possibly be resolved as long as the natives were being researched. Maybe if they were given information on what actually transpired, the Alliance scientists would stop the kidnappings. Desade, I'd like to discuss something with you. I'm listening. My colleagues are only interested in the physiology of the islanders and consider everything else to be superstitions. However, if we want to understand how they are transforming, we need to take a look at their culture. The potions they drink, the dyes they use are surely the source of their physical changes. Why not talk about it with Siora? It seems to me that she would be the best one to help you. Siora is very suspicious of me. She will never betray the secrets of the Donegada. But I was told about a place of ritual called Kurganau, decorated with carvings and offerings. By studying them, I hope to better understand what is possibly the greatest mystery of this century. But they call it a dangerous place and I cannot go alone. Will you accompany me? Very well. Understanding these transformations will surely be useful. Thank you, Desade. I knew I could count on you. Let's go. The Heart Gate was a very dangerous area. And Desade had to resort to discretion as a better part of valor. But at the Ring of Standing Stones, she saw the wild animals attacking two islanders. You were lucky. Without our presence here. Yes. Blessed be the earth that has brought you to us at this time. Oh, 
I... You one... I was touched. I am hurt. Oh no! Morian! These creatures are venomous. If their venom has come into contact with her blood, this young woman does not have long. And we are too far from the village to seek help. How are we going to save her? I know a potion that will erase the effects of the venom. I have a vial of it in my bag. Hold on. Thank you. Truly the best winds have brought you to us. Here, drink this. Don't worry. It'll heal you. You can trust her. She knows what she's doing. Morian, what do you feel? I... I feel the pain leaving me. She is saved. You have great wisdom. May the trees always bear fruits on your journey. You have saved Morian. It was nothing. I'm glad I could help you. You are different from other Renaixi. You know the potions. But what were you looking for here? We came to study this place, the carvings in particular. This is one of our places of ritual, a place of connection. What do you hope to learn from our carvings? I... I seek to understand the mechanisms of your transformations. I think these carvings could help with this. You seek the secrets of the Donegada. You should speak with Armal. Yes, his name is Dunkas. He is also our Donegad, and his wisdom is boundless. Here is someone who should be able to answer all your questions, Afra. Let us go, then. We will have time to discuss on the way. I have so many questions about this place, about the rituals that take place here. Bertir to mad, Donkas. These Renaiks have saved my life. What happened? We were meditating at the sacred circle in Kerganau, and we were attacked. Morian was poisoned, and they gave her a potion. Really? We are not yet used to the Renaixe doing something without expecting something in return. You should go and meditate now. I have to talk to them. They are different from the others. Oh, I'm sure of it. I hear your gratitude, Morian. It honors you. Now go. Leave us. My name is de Sarde. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. And I am Dunkas, the Marl of the Gigidor, and also his Doneigad. Your face markings designate you as one of ours, yet you are a Lugade Blau, a clan that rarely shows generosity, yet you saved Morian. I thank you for this. Please. We couldn't let her die without doing anything. This feeling brings you honor. But what were you doing near our sacred circle in Kerganau? It was me who led my friends there. I was hoping to study the circle to better understand your culture. Loyans always want the same thing. They covet our secrets to better steal our land, to better hurt our children. Calm now. Perhaps this loyalness is different from the others. Maybe we were wrong about them, too. I'm not trying to conquer your island, let alone hurt anyone. I just want to know. A noble quest that could perhaps bring peace, but to which I cannot answer alone. I cannot reveal such secrets without seeking advice from the Oda Donegad. But in order to thank you for saving one of our daughters, stay with us tonight. Eat and celebrate life. Maybe by sharing this joyous moment, you will learn something. We accept your invitation. Isn't that right, Desade? Of course. Thank you for welcoming us, Dunkas. What can you tell me about your clan? We are the Berai Gnodas, the bearers of life blood. We earned this name by bringing the trees and the earth back to life, by restoring balance. There are a lot of Onol Manawi here. It is true. We were already healing the earth before the bond existed. The bond just made us better. Many of us have chosen to follow this path because we are proud of our role amongst our brothers. Our village is home to the largest amount of Donegada, along with maybe Vishkadir. What do you think of the settlers from the continent? 
I think they behave like naughty, unruly children. They take what they want and break what they own without even understanding what they are doing. But they can learn and grow. And who would kill unruly children for being mischievous? Tell me about your village. We used to be nomads. We would go wherever Tia Freddy needed us until we healed the place. But the people of the sea came and hurt this place so much that my people had to stay here for a long time. For so long that they created this village, Vigigido, the place of the healed wound. Bird dear to Madronaikse, what wisdom do you seek from the elders? I would like to know more about your culture and your people. Ask your questions, Renaikse. Some of you show physical uniqueness, just like the one that accompanies me. You want to talk about the markings of Onol Manawe? That means those who are bonded in your language. This marking is a reflection of their alliance with the Oiland. Those who are bonded and become Donigarda show these markings, but so do their children. But your friend must know this. She who is undoubtedly the daughter of a Denegad. I didn't know that there were bonded ones on your distant island. You're the first one I have seen. You consider nature to be a kind of deity, do you not? And those who bind themselves to it are the priests. Deity? Priests? I don't understand what you're talking about, Renaikse. The word deity is used to designate a higher kind of spirit. The priests are those who serve it. You do not understand. There is no spirit above others. Rivers, rocks, trees. They all carry spirits within them that are one. The island. Tiefradi gives and takes back. Through her we are born. And one day, we return to her. Do you have any writings that record your knowledge? Any writings? Ah, I see what you want to talk about. No. Their words must travel through the air like birds. To write them down is to imprison them. In that case, how do you pass on your knowledge to your children, to your disciples? We talk to them. Don't you talk to your children on your island? Of course, but we also use books. The Donigarda use paintings, so that ancient knowledge is not lost. But these paintings are sacred and secret. They are not shown to everyone. Could you tell me about your village? It is known as Vigigado. It is the village of the Biraig Nodas. It means the wound healed on your tongue. And we are the bearers of Leufblot. Here the earth was burned, ruined by fighting against the sea people. The forests were devastated. The rivers filled with blood. Our ancestors came and closed the wound. It is the gift and the duty of our clan to heal what has been wounded. We are the tools of resilience. We healed this place. But we are often called to other places to restore balance. Yes, that is what we do. And Dunkas is the best of all of us. He is a wise and measured king. We are proud to have him as our Mal. I'm sorry. You look disappointed. I did not expect your Denegad to reveal all its secrets to us. But I would have loved to learn more. Perhaps you should be patient. It takes years to understand the mysteries of the Donegada. And since you are staying with us tonight, it will be an opportunity to continue learning. That's what I hope. Thank you for welcoming us tonight. We had a good time. Yes. It was very enlightening. We are glad that you stayed with us. We too have learned from you. Your face brings with thoughts, Afra. Is something wrong? It's nothing. Probably just tiredness. We should all rest. It has been a long day. May your dreams be wonderful.
Good night. May the moon watch over your dreams. Is something wrong? Dunkus wasn't here tonight, yet he's the one who invited us to stay. I also saw one of the elders sneaking out of the village. You think they're hiding something from us? I don't know. But since they don't want to share their knowledge with us, let's try to follow them. I don't like it one bit, Afra. If the elders and Dunkas are gone, then we have no right to follow them. In that case, why don't you explain where the transformation comes from? It's... It's not something that can be explained that easily. You have to believe to understand. You are not capable. I see. So we will discreetly follow these people, since this is the price of knowing. Perhaps not surprisingly, Siora is unhappy with Desa Day if she is there to see Afra's scheme. Here they are. Let's try not to be detected. Why don't the creatures attack them? I don't know. Are they guarding this place? If they're trained to guard it, this must be a very important place. as discreet as possible. They are below. Get down or we'll be seen. In a chest overlooking the ritual clearing, Desade finds a few pieces of native armor. Come out of the shadows. Voiding is futile. Forgive us. We did not intend to interrupt you. Why are you here? We're sorry. We didn't mean to interrupt your conversation. We need answers, so we followed your elders. I never thought I would see you like this, hiding in the bushes, spying on your elder's daughter of Bladmit. I'm the one who brought her here. She didn't want to follow you, but she refused to tell me what I need to know. <sighs> well, since you absolutely want to learn, do as the apprentices do. Take a seat, and be quiet. We are here to meditate, to hear the voice of the earth, because the wind has changed. Close to us, our witness, dearie. You were right. Yoan is ready. Morion's trial has made her more sensitive. She is his Minundanem, and he is hers. One cannot progress without the other. She will have to bring him to the Cave of Knowledge. This will be his last trial before creating the bond. May their path be gentle and shielded. As for me, I hear the call ever louder, Dunkas. And the day the call is loud enough, you will respond just like each of us. But it's not yet time for you to join Enon Milfrichtenen. So, Afra, are you satisfied with what you saw? It was informative. Although it's not what I expected. Thank you, Dunkus. This meeting was strange. It almost seemed like they really heard voices in the wind. Maybe it's true. Some believe so strongly that they end up hearing or seeing what they hope for. Have you learned what you wanted to? What they said about these young people we helped out, about the fact they were ready to bind themselves. We have a unique opportunity of seeing a transformation with our very own eyes. But we can't follow them wherever they go. No, of course not. I must think on it. Come back and talk to me later. Afro was still skeptical. But Desade shared Dunkus' hope that she would help put an end to the Alliance's kidnapping raids once she understood what was involved in the transformation. On the outskirts of the village, Desade found a small glowing shrine. Lighting a candle made her feel more relaxed and focused. She gained one skill point. She focused on improving her stasis skills. These would be important in dealing with large groups of enemies or heavily armored ones. Afra spoke to her the next day. Apparently she'd been deep in thought overnight. Maybe she'd been moved by what she learned from Dunkers. 
Desade, I'm happy to see you. I can't wait to find this famous cave of knowledge and what it contains. I could probably go alone, but just think about what you could learn and not only about yourself. Don't you want to understand where your face markings come from? You were right, Afra. I will accompany you. Thank you, Desade. Let's return to Dunkus's village. Our new friends will surely be able to tell us more about this cave. Or maybe not. Desade knew that this ran the risk of upsetting Dunkus and the elders, but his inter Afra's interest was genuine. Even if it wasn't, it was better that Desade went along to keep an eye on her. Can you come and see me? We are happy to see you again. You will always be welcomed as friends here. Thank you. I'm glad to see you too. But we came to ask you something. Of course. What do you want? When we participated in the Dunkus meditation, he spoke of a cave of knowledge you had to go to. And do you want to see it? You still wish to learn how we become bound? It is a very sacred place. Only those who will become Donegada may enter there. That's right, year one. But they saved my life. If someone finds out that we have helped the Renaixe to enter a sacred place, they will refuse to bind me. Dunkus will never do such a thing. What needs to be done will happen, no matter what. You're probably right. Look for the entrance in the Vedhad Ganadu. Entering there will not be easy, but you will have to discover the rest by yourself. Like true apprentices. Thank you, Morian. And fear not. No one will ever learn what you have entrusted us with. She felt bad for seemingly taking advantage of their gratitude, but glad that the islanders were so willing to help. The party returned to the ritual circle, where they had originally met the young islanders. The cavern was in the hills beyond. Bandits, and they were talking about a cabin. Could it be the same one that Death Day was heading to? They also spoke of a corpse. What was at play here? Hey, what are you doing here? We could ask you the same question. Except we found this place first. The treasure is ours. So I suggest you disappear. Fast. Listen, we didn't mean to bother you. We were only exploring the area. But perhaps you could tell us exactly what you're doing here. Huh. You look like nobility. And we don't want any trouble. We also are, um, explorers. We discover secret places. That type of thing. Really? And you found one near here? Yeah. We managed to convince a savage to talk to us. And he told us there's a holy cave not far from here. The kind of place where the natives hide their treasures. But be careful, eh? It's ours. And how do you plan on entering this cave? Well, with enough explosives, we'll eventually get through those routes blocking the entrance. It's only a matter of time. I see. Very subtle. And the islander didn't tell you anything about this? He didn't really have the time. And he didn't have a key on him. Just some bloody seeds. Anyway, now that you know what we're doing here, you'd better leave. Listen, I don't want to worry you, but you are taking a big risk by staying around here. When the Islanders' clan notice his disappearance, they will come for him. You can imagine what will happen then. Yeah, you're not wrong. With the time it'll take to craft enough explosives, we may end up with a whole tribe after us. Here, never mind, guys. We're leaving, fast! They tortured a young Nishir. And even thick idiots like them understood what would happen to them if the rest of the tribe became aware of what they'd done. It was very easy to frighten them off with a simple reminder. Unfortunately, Desade didn't have a chance to bury the young islanders' corpse. But she'd informed the islanders on the way back so they could conduct the necessary rituals. At last, we made it here. How do we get in? Look around. There has to be a way. This stone. There's a slot at the top. Probably to put something in. The natives' beliefs are based on exchanges. If we want this door to open, I imagine that we will have to make an offering. Now we have to find out what we should offer. 
Here is my offering to the Cave of Knowledge. There. Place the seed on the stone. There were two vivid murals, very similar to those she'd seen in the ruins with Ziora after the battle. It seems like this painting depicts some kind of ritual. Yes. The character at the center is pouring blood on a stone. And one of these giant creatures that the natives call Nardigs is present. The location looks like the stone circle where we met the two young natives. The character has changed. He now resembles an Onol Manawi. You're right. They even depict his bond to the forest. Someone's coming. Let's hide. If anyone finds us here, we're sure to lose the trust of the islanders. Esku halen, esku valg me da gengu selerge mantadabem avenundanum. Mach, es boglen daiga ni dao, a yigi dames et hier como lei. Kair to, Morian, ages radai da radi dao em taerger began. Kau den nes greta como lei, nas oltargo tu, vreg de det mad advad. Abud antadab me en ekekam, no adaholeg. It was time to make a discreet exit. The paintings in the cave were magnificent and have taught us so much. It is obvious that they depict the bonding ritual and its consequences. It is by pouring their blood on the raised stones that the natives become metamorphs. I'm not really sure if I follow you. And yet it's clear to see. The islanders think that their ritual has magic consequences, but there must be some sort of contamination in their blood as they pour it. The only way to verify this theory is to attend a full ritual. We must attend year ones. How will we know when it takes place? Dunkas said it would take place after the young people visited the cave, and they will most likely need some preparation. We should go to the Holy Circle of Kurganau tomorrow. What do you say? Will you come with me? I hope the Dunkas will not be too angry after seeing us there. Let's take some time to rest, and then we'll go back to the place where we met them. Afra still refused to believe that there was something mystical about the ritual itself. While it was possible that a blood contamination took place, it was also quite clear that the natives had magic. Even Talemi had magic, yet the Alliance refused to believe that it was magic. Maybe such a fundamental difference in viewing the world is why there were such irreconcilable differences between the lines in both magic welding groups. Just like last time, Dunkers knew they were there, almost as if the earth was whispering in his ear. You again! Your curiosity is truly unquenchable. Forgive our intrusion, Dunkers, but I really want to attend Yewan's ritual. I have learned a lot thanks to you, but I still have so much left to understand. If you were one of ours, Afra, I would be flattered to have such an inquisitive and resolute apprentice. You can attend the ritual, but promise me that you will be discreet. No Renaixi ever had this honor before. We will do everything in our power to prove ourselves worthy of your trust, Dunkus. Times really must have changed for some Renaixe to attend our rituals. These are very different from the others. Their leader is an Onol Menawi after all. I know I look like them, but I'm not one of them. You may not be bonded, but your parents must have been. You should be proud and happy about it. It is probably thanks to your bond that Duncas has accepted your presence. So her facial markings had come from Desaide's mother being bonded to the island. She'd known that her the mother back in Old Serene hadn't been her biological mother, just from the difference in looks. But had she truly come from the island, every islander thought her a fellow native. How are you? You must be feeling impatient. Impatient, yes, and a little bit afraid as well. It's only natural to be afraid, Yerwan. It's a new life starting for you, but I will be by your side, now and forever. You look preoccupied. Our people have suffered many lion's attacks, 
often during rituals. In some villages, all the young Sinal Manawi were abducted. You seem different from the other Zafra, but I can't help worrying. I have nothing to do with these attacks, Dunkas, I swear. I believe you. Otherwise, you would not be here with us. But I hope that your brothers will not be there in the shadows, ready to pounce on our children. Nestiri, a desta marar mam. Meneda, Meneda, You are an Onol Manawi now, Yawan, and soon you will heal the earth by our sides, like a real Donegad. Thank you, Donkas. I feel so proud. I am so happy that we can be Voglendaiga together at last. What about you, Afra? Did you find the answers you were looking for? It's strange. I didn't exactly understand what happened, but I am moved. Some events must be understood with the heart, not the head. It seems like you are right, Tunkus. We are under attack. Grab the young... Better more. The other... They won't touch you. Decide we have to protect them. You can count on me. Curiosity Afra has saved lives. If it weren't for you, people from my village would have been abducted or killed. I am infinitely grateful, especially considering that fighting against your brothers could not have been easy. Indeed. These people were brutes. They had it coming. However, you don't know how right you are, Dunkus. I recognize some of these men. Really? Did they belong to the governor's court? No. They worked for my former master, Dr. Asili. I was his student for a long time before I realized that this man's methods were... questionable. He was so obsessed with his goals that he became cruel. But I can't believe he'd go as far as abducting people for his experiments. You think that the Onol Manawi are used for experiments? Now that I have seen these soldiers, I am certain of it, and I am afraid they may suffer atrocious treatment under the guise of scientific progress. I am so ashamed. Come now, shame serves no purpose. And you are proof that the lions are not all the same. Thank you, Dunkus. And thank you, Desade. You opened my eyes. Unfortunately, Dunkus's fears had come true. 
It seems that the tales of kidnappings were not exaggerated. But fortunately Death's Day was here. This Asili resembles the people who tarnished the reputation of the alchemist she'd helped back in Old Serene. Completely devoid of any kind of morals or ethics and willing to do anything to any living being if it increased their knowledge. It also seems that these people are acting on their own and without approval from the governor. It may well be that the entire conflict between the islands and the bridge alliance is due to people like this. She'd have to look into this. I'm under the impression that you've not learned as many things as you wanted by observing Dorcas's clan. That's true. I hope to discover the physical or alchemical mechanism behind their metamorphosis. But instead, I don't know. I think I now understand the bond that unites their people to this land. The links that connects them and the power of their culture. It's unexpected. I wonder if this couldn't become another subject for study. The study of people, their customs and beliefs. If I said that in Al Saad, people would think I've gone mad, but here, everything is possible, right? Learning about the natives would allow us to stop being afraid of them and to see them like fellow humans at last. The tale of this Eden intrigued her. The road to it lay beyond the missionary fort near New Serene. Beyond it, she came across a very interesting sight. A group of adventurers was fighting another day. She just witnessed that they weren't mindless beasts, so she avoided joining the fight immediately. Maybe they were just another band of looters, like many of those she'd seen. Inspecting the bodies after the battle showed that they were indeed looters. It seems that the combat had been unwisely initiated by them. One of the bodies was obviously more wealthy than the rest and had a key on him. That key opened a chest over near the creek. Inside she found what must have been the merchant's gear. There was a pack of armored beasts sleeping near the bridge, but we left them to the beauty sleep. And another altar that glowed in the distance. She felt more focused after lighting a candle on it and maximized her stasis skill. The path was now open to learn healing magic. Eden lay in the Black Lands. These were named as such because of the brackish swamp that dominated it. Wild and poisonous beasts roamed about. But the village was in a higher elevation to the west. The village was a strange mix of islander and Telemi architecture. What an astounding place. My mother told me about this place. She said that the village was devoured by the houses of the sons. How could their chief accept this? All that's left to do is find Father Eustinius. It was seemingly the perfect mixture of both cultures, with islanders wearing continental clothing. Maybe this was the future of coexistence. As you might expect, the sky is dominated by a church being built. Telemi intended the state to be permanent. Welcome to Eden, the lighthouse of faith, harmony and civilization in these wild lands. Thank you. Desade. I am the legate of the merchant congregation. And I am Father Eustinius. Delighted. And what may I do for you? The Mother Cardinal has asked me to investigate the theft of these tablets you discovered. That's excellent news. The loss of the tablets is a catastrophe. We have to find them at all costs. If you want to learn more about these tablets, you should go ask Sister Eugenia. She supervises the theologians who discovered them and were also guarding them. You should find her a bit further in the village, with her colleagues. Who are the suspects of this theft? The heretical brutes of the village of Vedlug most likely had a hand in this. They must have wanted to please the demons they worshipped by stealing the holy word from us. 
How could they have learned of the tablet's existence? Uh, perhaps the demons are giving them this power. Unless one of the natives living in the village innocently mentioned them. They are so naive. Either way, I am certain that the heretics are involved in this matter. I wonder how my people could accept the priest settling in their home like this. It all seems a bit too convenient. If we find out some information about the history of Eden, maybe we'll change our view on things. The theft of the relic is probably not a coincidence. Ah yes, heretics. It always came down to that with Telaime. You either believe, or are a heretic that must be converted. If it wasn't for the war between Telaime and the Bridge Alliance, the Sade could see them try to convert the congregation. By force if necessary, as she'd seen the Inquisitor attempt when she first entered San Mateo's. Yori, I have never seen a Renaixe on Ol Manawi. Yori, I have never seen a Renaixe on Ol Manawi. Bird dear to man! Surprisingly, to the native still wearing native clothing, she seems as surprised by us as we are by her. Hello. The Mother Cardinal asked me to help you find the tablets that were stolen. Can I ask you some questions? Of course. But hurry, I have a lot to do. I talked to Father Justinius. He told me that you were supervising the theologians here. Indeed. It is under my supervision that the research on St. Matthias is conducted. Whom do you suspect of being the thief? Oh, alas. I'm afraid there are many suspects. These tablets are priceless relics. Some settlers may have fallen prey to the lure of profit. The heretical natives of Vedlug may have wanted to take them away from us. Or it could have been vengeance by those who had to leave the village. Where were the tablets the night they were stolen? We were keeping them in one of the village's shacks. We intended to bring them to San Mateus later. But first, we wanted to examine them in order to obtain as much information as possible. You can go and take a look in the shack if you want to. But I couldn't find any traces of forced entry. I imagine that someone was keeping watch over them. Of course, we took turns guarding the shack. But some of us can't have taken the task that seriously. If I remember correctly, it was Brother Virgil who was guarding them that night. Well, thank you for these pieces of information. I am the one who should be thanking you. Especially if you managed to retrieve the tablets for us. The Mother Cardinal told me that this village had been developed on the basis of St. Lucius's writings. Are you one of the theologians who helped in its creation? Yes. I was sent here to confirm that this place is indeed the one described in the writings, and then I stayed. What was the reaction of the natives when you arrived here? Most of them were not in favor of us living amongst them. They were afraid we might chase them out of their own village. And there were even more protests once we started talking about searching for traces of St. Matthias. I suppose they thought we would destroy all of their raised stones and other places of superstition. Were there any confrontations with the natives? Yes. The warriors of the village attacked us. The Ordo Luminous actually had to intervene. The Inquisition managed to make them run away. The islanders tried to attack again with the support of Vedlug, but we stood our ground. And when Lur, the chief of the village, finally accepted our presence, things calmed down. Thank you. This information will certainly prove to be useful. It seems that the natives were right to fear being pushed from their own homes by the missionaries. Sister Eugenia portrayed her as the missionaries being attacked, but they'd moved in without asking. If you are saying that these tablets bear writings from the very hand of our holy founder, then we must find them. Without them, all our research to trace the life of St. Matthias on this island is doomed to failure. If these savages have stolen them, we will have to take them back, by force if necessary. Do you have any ideas about who stole the tablet? Some of the village savages helped us during the search. Perhaps they are behind all of this. There was a particular woman who seemed to want us to be there. I don't remember her name, though. Greetings. Desade. I'm handling the investigation into the theft of the tablets. Sister Eugenia told me to talk to you. I'm Brother Virgil. What would you like to know? According to your colleague, you were the one in charge of guarding the tablets on the night of the theft. Is that right? Indeed. What can you tell me about that night? 
Did you hear or see anything? No, nothing in particular. The night was quiet, and then the morning after, we saw they were gone. Someone had to enter the shack to steal the tablets. How did that happen? I have no idea. The door was closed in the morning, and the lock was intact. Do you suspect anyone in particular? Not really. What I can tell you for sure is it is not one of us. Well, Sister Eugenia did tell me that the tablets were priceless. Of course. But our motivation is not the lure of profit. All that matters to us is their value as proof, not the money we could make out of them. Do you think the culprit could be a native? Well, since none of us did it, it seems obvious. There aren't many other settlers around here, and the natives knew of the existence of these tablets before we found them. They were attached to them too, in their own way. They are the ones who led you to them. Well, we conducted the research, but they helped us find where they were hidden. Some inhabitants of the village are still giving us a hand with our work. Well, thank you. I will investigate where the theft took place. As you wish. But you won't find anything there. And why does it matter, anyway? There were witnesses to the discovery of these tablets. We have all the proof we need. And that's all that matters. What do you mean? Now we can prove Saint Matthias lived here. Our actions on this island are justified. To keep rummaging the way Sister Eugenia does will only create more tensions with the natives. I was not expecting a theologian to say such things. Have you been in Eden for a long time? Two months, approximately. Back then, there were still some pagan natives in the village. I joined Sister Eugenia's team with some of my colleagues, so we could give them a fresh outlook on things. We arrived straight from Teleme, hoping to study some new texts. But once we were here, I understood that my real mission was with the islanders. We must bring the light to this island. How are your relations with the natives? When I arrived, we were still trying to obtain information from them about St. Matthias. But they were very reluctant to give us any answers. We were also trying to educate them. Our attempts eventually made some of the inhabitants of the village react badly. Most stubborn against our teachings, the warriors and the marked. The ones the natives call the Onomanawi. They eventually left, and it has proved nothing but a blessing for us. You talked about a mission with the natives. What did you mean by that? I may be under the command of Sister Eugenia here, but my superior is Bishop Domitius. Our mission is to banish pagan cults and convert the entire population to the light. The island belongs to Saint Matthias, and therefore to Teleme, since the God of Light offered it to our founder. If your superior is Domitius, you are a member of the Ordo Luminis. I did not expect to find one of its members side by side with the missionaries. They usually do not get along. The Order goes everywhere the light needs to be revealed. You have a very unique way of seeing things. I doubt everyone accepts it. I would like to go back to work now, if you don't mind. Of course. Brother Virgil was surprisingly blasé about the tablets being lost. He didn't even seem interested in finding them. Belonging to the Order Luminous explained many things, however. The Sather recalled the experience of the historians back in Old Terrine. There were clearly elements in Teleme that were more interested in covering up the actual history of San Mateos. The reality of San Mateos was unimportant in comparison to what they wanted to believe and how they used San Mateos to justify it. Hmm. There's only one entrance and the door shows no evidence of a break-in. This priest, Virgil, said that the night was calm. So calm that he probably fell asleep. So the thieves only had to take the key from him. It's very likely that that's what happened, but someone must have informed them. It can't be a coincidence that they decided to steal it during the watch of the only neglectful guard. You think that the one who told them is in this village? We know that this theft could be an act of vengeance by the natives who were forced to leave here. They must still have allies in the village. Family or friends. We should go talk to the chief of the natives. 
He will certainly know who's close to the Exiles, and enough about the researchers to inform them. Tell me about how you created this village. We did not create it from the ground up. It was built around an existing native village. The islanders called it Vigsenegad, which translates to the village of the old sage. Ha! <laughs> we saw it as a sign. The natives had probably chosen this name in memory of St. Matthias, and everything here fit the description of St. Lucius. The discovery of the tablets proved us right. So, we decided to rebuild our Eden here, in the spirit of peace and harmony which is described in the scriptures. Why share this village with the natives? To replicate and resume the work of our founder, of course. If he came here and managed to convert the natives, then it is our duty to do the same thing. By living side by side with them, it is much easier for us to pass on our teachings. How well do you get along with the natives who live here? Uh, very well, of course. Especially since those who opposed our presence left. Left? To go where? Oh, to other villages, I imagine. Does it even matter? Those who stayed are on the path of enlightenment. Some of their legends must have been about Saint Matthias. That helped to convince them. And how well have neighboring villagers welcomed you? With some reluctance, to be perfectly honest. So, we sent them missionaries. There are still frequent conflicts with the village of Vedluk, a highly violent village of heretics. But the other villages, the more peaceful ones, are slowly starting to listen to the sacred word. There are no Onol Manawi and no warriors here either. Did they all leave? Perfect harmony takes time, my child. I have no doubt that one day we will manage to convince your kind to convert. But in the meantime, we must settle for the miracle of great coexistence that this place already represents. Nobody thought we could live side by side with your people. And yet... There's a few things that just don't seem right about the way Father Justinius depicts the situation. Clearly the cohabitation wasn't as seamless as imagined, where many native houses were now overgrown bricks. Hello. I am Ler, the village leader. Well, I was the leader of this village. Hello. De Sade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. There are Onol Manawi among the Logaid Blau. I did not know that. What do you want from me? I have heard a lot of things about this village of Eden, but I'd like to hear your version. Hmm. I'm not sure Roy have the answers to all of your questions, but I'll try. Tell me about the arrival of the people of Teleme and how you received them. The priests were roaming around the village. They were saying that it was the place where their saint had lived. They were asking questions, talking about the Lloyd and all these things. One morning they were building houses next to ours. And we had new neighbors. The priests told me that they had managed to convert you. How did that happen? As long as we refused to listen to them, they were violent, and they destroyed some of our sanctuaries. So we let them talk. And now that they think that we love their god, they leave us alone. Some of the things they say are beautiful, and their magic is impressive. But we do not forget our spirits. One of the theologians told me that you had helped them in their research. They wanted to find tracks of the old sage, of the one they call Saint Matthäus, and they were rummaging through everything. Our Donegad did not want to tell them anything, because the old sage is sacred here. But since they violently interrogated everyone, I thought it wise to guide them to the place where the stones were. What happened to your warriors? Why did they have to leave the village? They did not accept the presence of the priests and their questions. They tried to retake the village. They even asked Derdra, the chief of Vedlug, for her help. So, the priests called the Sol Lasse, the Burning Sons, and they killed many of them. Oi asked for peace, and the others left us. They wanted to join Vedlug. 
Perhaps they have done so. Aren't you angry after all that happened? No. I mourn those who died, of course. And the Vorsh Tyrant. But this village may be our opportunity. Your opportunity for what? For the Renaixe to understand who we are. Not savages, nor monsters, but men. Perhaps wiser than they are. I think I know who stole the tablets. Really? I believe those who were exiled from your village seek vengeance because the missionaries forced them to leave. They must have taken the tablets with the help of someone else who stayed here. You may be right, but you may also be wrong. You do well to tell me what you know. Once the priests have reached the same conclusions as I have, how do you think they will interrogate you? You're probably right. The Inquisitors would come back, and my people would suffer. I do not want to break the peace that I did all I could to make. I think the name of the woman you are looking for is Vindwal. She helps the priests who seek the old sage. If she's helping the priests, why would she betray them now? Her son is one of the warriors who had to leave the village. He is filled with anger and fury. If you go talk to her, please, do not hurt her. She is but a mother who acted according to her son's wishes. I have no intention of hurting her. But things may not be so simple when it comes to her son. I knew that the story would be more complex than we'd been told. The priests separated this village into two parts. The exiles must be broken-hearted, having left their clan behind. Had they been wiser and accepted their new neighbors, they'd never have been forced to leave. Either way, the resentment here is strong enough for a theft to occur. Right, so it seems that any cooperation with Teleme was forced with interrogation and violence rather than through obtaining goodwill. It was remarkable that the chief held hope for true coexistence. The side they was forced to have doubts about Teleme coming to see the islanders as equals. Why would they, when interrogation and slaughter lets them achieve their desires anyway? It was the lady she'd spoken to earlier, the islander who still dresses as a native. Greetings. Are you Vindwal? Bird tier to mud. Yes, that is me. What do you want? What can you tell me about Lair, your former leader? He is a man of peace. Some people dislike him, not me. Everything he did, he did to save the village. But I think the mind shakers made him forget what we are. He almost speaks like them now. Listen, I know you helped the exiles to steal the tablets of Saint Matthias. No, this is not true. It wasn't me. There's no point in denying it. I know you did it for your son who had to leave the village. If you know that, then you know that I don't have the tablets. So what do you want from me? The only means of alleviating the situation with Teleme is to give the priests their tablets back. So if you do not want your son to suffer their wrath, it would be best if I could retrieve them discreetly. Uh, Bran and the rest of the exiles are hiding in the woods, beyond the stone circle. If you want to take the tablets away from them without being seen, do not take the part on the left. It is riddled with traps. And please, do not hurt my son. Here's the place that Vindwal indicated. The exiles must be near. These people have been banished already. There's no need to add death to their list of punishments. Let's try not to fight them. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. Remember that we were told the area on the left was a trap. It would be smarter to take the other path. The Sade was glad to know that Bishop Petrus was also keen on sparing the young warriors. They reached the tablets undetected and managed to avoid a confrontation. There, we found them. Now all that's left to do is return to Eden. What are you doing here? I was worried for my son. I wanted to make sure that everything was fine. I'm sorry, Vindwal, but I had to resort to force. 
Your son and his friends are dead. No! Kerton Sidag! Why did he have to seek revenge? Ma Rentam! I am genuinely sorry. Go! Leave me alone! Oi must now return them to the earth. What are you doing here? Oi was worried for my son. Oi wanted to make sure that everything was fine. I think so. I managed to retrieve the tablets discreetly. Oi am glad to hear that you managed to retrieve them. Oi will go talk to my son now. He needs to stop seeking revenge and find a new clan. That would indeed be wiser. Vengeance has no positive repercussions. The missionaries were overjoyed at the return of the tablets, though Brother Virgil wasn't quite as overjoyed as the others. I retrieved your relics. Thank you. Thank you immensely. Thanks to them, we will be able to continue our research on St. Matthias. I am curious to know who is responsible for this theft. The culprit must be brought to justice. I do not want to point the finger at anyone. You have your relics back, and that's the only thing that matters. Your indulgence honors you. But how can we be certain that these thieves will not strike again if they are not punished? A good start would be to keep a better watch on the priceless treasures that you find. Had you respected this village, you would not have to look for a culprit. You settled here without even asking those who lived here for their opinion on the matter. Instead of talking about harmony, start taking action to really make it happen. But that is precisely what we desire more than anything. Oh, we may have been a bit clumsy in the beginning, but we'll make sure to improve things in the future. You really were a great help. I would be most grateful if you agreed to continue helping us. I might come back at some point, but alas, I am very busy. Naturally. Either way, we are certainly capable of continuing our research without you. Actually, I must go back to my work. Our next expedition must depart as soon as possible. Your next expedition? Our brave researchers must continue to follow the tracks of our founder on this island. In the meantime, here, take this as a token of gratitude for the help you gave us. Thank you. I hope your expedition will be a success. But regardless, Bishop Petrus's and Siora's advice was well heeded by Father Justinius. He meant well, even if their first actions were clumsy, as he put it. We can't be far from the ruins Lady Morange advised us to visit. Look, up there. This is Didri, the ruins Lady Morange told us about. But I do not know how to get there. The path collapsed. Some of the tunnels in the mine may lead to it. We should go there. The mystery of the origins of the ruins and these sea people was something that she had to follow up on. How is it possible that people from the continent had not only found the island, but settled it and Your warred with the natives centuries prior? Why was this completely unknown? The entrance to Qualosone is here. The people of the village might be able to teach us a few things. Good grief. These are some unusual customers. <laughs> well, I have everything a miner could need. And everything anyone else could, too. Greetings, my lady. It's a real pleasure to have a customer such as yourself. I imagine that your customers are mostly miners. Yes. For this reason, I mostly sell supplies and tools. But as you can see, I have some other riches. <laughs> I'm sure this village will eventually grow larger. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe this alley will become more lively. Thank you. It was a pleasure. A mine that had recently been reopened may show a path, but should have to prepare before entering. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.